Hello, children, I see you. I'm very happy to see you. Greet your family, boogie on down. Give a clap and turn around. And I'm Miss Wendy, and we're going to be doing a lot of learning about water with a lot of singing. But first, we are going to learn about the three states of water. So the first state is going to be ice, when water is a solid. So I'm going to get my ice pack here because I couldn't take out an ice cube, it would melt in the heat. So here's my ice. And when water, which is made out of little molecules, think of that as tiny drops of water. When all of those molecules are totally still and bunched together, they're not moving at all. They're in a rigid crystal. Can you make a rigid crystal like this? Then we have ice, it's a solid. But when the water molecules, those little bits of water start moving a little bit, let's move those molecules, then it's liquid like this. And when those molecules, those little bits of water get moving even faster like they do when we heat something up in a tea kettle and the steam comes out, it's gonna be a little bit like, here's my water spray. So a little bit like, whoa, water vapor. So the molecules were liquid, but it's getting warmer and they're moving faster and faster. Can you make them move faster and faster? And they go way up into the air. And that's when water is a gas. So let's sing a song about all the different ways waters can be. So get ready. Water solid. Water's liquid, water's gas, don't you know? It can move and it can change. We can see it high and low. And we call it the water cycle when it moves through those different states or phases. So let's sing our water cycle song, so you can see here where it moves from a solid to a liquid to a gas. So we're gonna make the water cycle. Let's make our cycle. Water travels in a cycle, don't you know? Water travels in a cycle, don't you know? Whoa, it goes up as evaporation forms clouds as condensation and comes down as precipitation, don't you know? And now we are going to be water properties because water has certain properties. So water has a property of adhesion. It can stick to things. So let's take our hand and I'm going to pick up my water bottle and hold on to it. That's water adhesion, the way it sticks to things. So if you pour drops of water on a little penny, they will stick together and they will form, let's make a curve, something called a meniscus because the tension in the water is holding them together. Water also sticks to itself. So it not only sticks to the penny, but the water molecule sticks to itself. We call that cohesion. So let's put our two hands together like water molecules sticking together. And water goes through thin tubes like in paper and trees. We call that capillary action, sort of like a straw sipping things up. So let's be straws sipping things up. So those are some of the water 
properties. And we see that in how water travels in trees. So at the bottom of the tree, at the roots, we have roots pushing the water up. So let's push, 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 push. But then in the trunk of the tree, it's like the straws, lots of little straws inside that trunk, sucking the water up. So let's be the little straws sucking the water up. But the main thing that takes the water to the top of the tree, see these leaves up here, is leaf pull. So let's pull the water up to the top of the trees. So that's how water moves in trees. We also think of water as having storms. So we can act out being the storm. So first let's blow like the wind coming in before the storm comes. Now we're gonna be gentle rain. So tap, 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 gentle rain. Now we're gonna be the thunder that comes. Clap, clap, clap really loudly. Now with the lightning. Make your fingers be the lightning. The storm's really getting strong. Now stamp your feet, that's the heavy rain. Now the light rain and the wind and it quiets and the storm is over. There's our storm. We use water in many different ways. Let's look. Can you see some of the different ways we use water? Let's look at the picture here. So we drink water and we cook with water. We paint with water. We go in the swimming pool. We mop. We brush teeth, we wash clothes. So let's look at some of the ways we use water. So here's my mop. I'm going to mop the floor with water. Here's my watering can because I might need to water my plants. Here's my sponge for washing dishes. And oh, I find water and fruits. I could make a smoothie. I use my sponge for cleaning house. And I might pour with water. I might blow bubbles with water. I could make Kool-Aid with water. I could brush my teeth with water. I could make a water balloon with water. I could wash my hands. We do that a lot now with water. I could make jello with water. So there are lots of things that we can do, but we always remember that we save water. So we turn that faucet off right away. We try to plant native plants. So we don't need a lot of water on our lawns. So we're very careful how we save water. Now let's sing a song about some of the ways that we are going to be using water. So drinking water, drinking water, you and me, you and me, everyone is thirsty. So we're drinking water, sip, go, slurp, sip, go, slurp. Going swimming, going swimming in the pool, in the pool. Soon I'll feel nice and cool. Swimming in the swimming pool, jumping in, jumping in. Now I'm bathing, now I'm bathing, squeaky clean. Squeaky clean, playing with the bubbles, washing my arms and my legs. Splish, splash, splish, splish, splash, splish. And now we find water in lots of different places. Let's look at some of the places we find water. 
in animals, in lakes, in streams, in waterfalls, in oceans, in forests, in glaciers. So we find water in so many different places. Look at in the clouds. Over here is a big iceberg and a beautiful waterfall. So let's sing about some of the places we find water. And it goes like this. There's water in the pond. There's water in the pond. Splish, splash, drippity drop. There's water in the pond. Let's make it a lake a little bigger. There's water in the lake. There's water in the lake. Splish, splash, drippity drop. There's water in the lake. Now we're the big ocean. There's water in the ocean. There's water in the ocean. Splish, splash, drippity drop. There's water in the ocean. Now let's be a little creek with one finger. There's water in the creek. There's water in the creek. Splish, splash, drippity drop. There's water in the creek. Now we are going to be a stream. So we use our whole hand. There's water in the stream. There's water in the stream. Splish, splash, drippity drop. There's water in the stream. Now we're river. We use our whole arm. There's water in the river. There's water in the river. Splish, splash, drippity drop. There's water in the river. And we can be finger water. So let's be finger water. And it goes like this. Water in the river. Water in the pool. Water from the faucet. Rainwater makes us cool. We've had a lot of rain recently. Now we're going to read that same finger play as a story. And it's called Water, Water Everywhere. We find water in different places. So it goes like this. Water, water everywhere. Water in the river. Water in the pool. You see that pool? Water from the faucet. There's our faucet. Rainwater makes us cool. And now we are going to think about how we could do a water walk. So let me think about how I could find water. Where could you find water in your house? Maybe you could find water if the sprinkler was running or in a sink, or in a pool, or in bubbles? Where can you find water outside your house? Let's see. Is there dew on the grass? Is there sweat? Do we see clouds? Are there puddles of water? And we have lots of ways we play with water, pouring, splashing, wringing out, blowing bubbles. Can you think of other ways we play with water? Now I'm looking around. I'm looking for some more water. I wonder where there's water right out here. Guess what? I am mainly water. You are mainly water. Did you know your bodies are mainly water? Yes, you are mainly water. So we have lots of water around us. Now we are going to look at some ways that we can do water art. So the first thing that I did was I made a water collage. So you can see I had some crumpled tissue paper for a nice river and a little pond made of crepe paper and some clouds made of 
cotton balls and I had a rainbow made of different colored papers. So here's my colored papers for my rainbow and my clouds. Another art project I did was to make a water collage with lots of different things. So I cut out some pictures of things we might find with water. And I got some loose cellophane. I thought that would be good water. And I wanted something to be some rain. So I got some bubbles. And then I glued that all together to make a water collage with my water and my pictures and my rain. Another thing I did was cloud painting. So let me grab my cotton ball and there it is. I put a little bit of paint on wet paint on a paper. And then I took my cotton ball and I used it to spread the paint and make all sorts of designs. I call that cloud painting because my cotton ball is my pretend cloud. The last thing I did is I got a big brush and dipped it in water and I could paint the walls because it wasn't going to make them change colors. It was just water. So I did some wall painting. Next, I made some water snacks. So the first one I tried, I made with blueberry jelly. But it's my blueberry jelly. It was supposed to be blue, but you'll see it didn't exactly turn out to be blue. But here's what it looked like. So I made I used some different things to be the rocks at the bottom. And I put on some goldfish and I had some coconut seaweed. So I had some pumpkin seeds and I had some oatmeal to be the sand. And I had some different chips to be some different kinds of shells. And I made this one, but I decided it wasn't blue enough. So then I made this one. I wonder if you can guess, oops, I've got it upside down. So same thing, I have a little bit of ground oatmeal for the sand and I have some, uh, a pumpkin seed and some chips to be the shells and rocks. And I have, there's my goldfish and the coconut to be the seaweed. I wonder, how do you think I got this to look a really pretty blue? That's a problem for you to think about. So some of the things that I used to make my snacks were my goldfish, my food color, that gives you a hint how I got it beautifully blue, my ground up oatmeal for the sand, my rice cakes, for the background, there's my pumpkin seeds to be some rocks. There's my coconut to be some seaweed. And so I thought that one came out looking a little bit more like an ocean. Now, one other thing I could do is I could drink a blue drink and pretend that that was ocean water. So those are some of the snacks that I made for water. So let's see if we can remember some of the basic things we learned about water today. So the first thing is water solid, water's liquid, water's gas. Don't you know it can move and it can change. We can see it high and low, and then water travels in a cycle, don't you know? 
Water travels in a cycle, don't you know? It goes up as evaporation, forms clouds as condensation, and comes down as precipitation, don't you know? And now it's time for us to say goodbye for this week. But don't forget, there's going to be something going on at Hardberger Park every Saturday, including those grab and go bags. And then we will meet in a month to learn about busy as a bee. So let's sing our shake hands with family. It's time to go shake hands with family. It's time to go shake hands with family. It's time to go. We hope we'll see you soon. Goodbye, children. Goodbye, children. Goodbye, children. We'll see you again next month for bees. And we'll learn all about bees the different roles, the different foods they have, the different roles they have in the hive. We'll learn about how they make honey and how they communicate with dancing. We have such exciting things to learn about bees. So I'll see you next month. Bye-bye. Now it's time to wave bye-bye, wave bye-bye, wave bye-bye. Now it's time to wave bye-bye. I'll see you again for bees. <laughs>